How mitake happy? Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about how you can use the medicine wheel in your own life. Hopefully by now you have listened to part one, which tells of the history of the medicine wheel and also the part two video where I talk about the many things that it represents. When you use the medicine wheel, every time you use it, it does not have to be exactly the same. This is not a religion. This is not any kind of organized ideology. One of the places you can use the medicine wheel is in your own home. You can choose a room, some place private, where you can do this activity that I'm going to talk about. I'll give you an example. If you use your bedroom, what you could do is you could put cloths in each direction. So you're going to have to find out which direction is west. And then you begin from there. As I stated in the previous medicine wheel videos, the Lakota star knowledge order of the colors is that black is at the west, white is at the north, yellow is at the east, and red is in the south. So, one idea is to get four cloths each one being one of these colors that I just mentioned. So you put your black cloth wherever west is, and you put your white cloth wherever north is, and the yellow cloth at the east, and the red cloth at the south. It doesn't have to be a certain size. It could be something small as long as you can see it so you know what the directions are. And some people might make a homemade flag and put it in the directions. I say west because this is the first direction that was created. And so in this activity, it will start at the west. So you're looking to the west, you face the west, and you can talk to the grandfather, you know, the brother that made the west direction. And you can talk about whatever it is in your heart, and your mind. It could be anything. Talk about maybe something you're worried about, something you're concerned about. Maybe there's something difficult you're experiencing in your life. Or maybe you're just thankful. Maybe you have come through a difficulty and you want to say thanks. This is something you can do too. So there's many reasons for doing this. You So again, you begin by facing the West. You visualize the grandfather that is there, the guy who made the West direction. And you can say anything that you want. If something is bothering you, you can talk about that. And then you take a little pause, and then you face the north. So move your body so that you're facing the north. If you put a white cloth there, that's your representation of the north direction. So you can sit there and do the exact same thing that you did to the west. And it doesn't have to be exact, okay? Because maybe, for example, when you're facing the north direction, you think of something new. That's good. Then say it. But you don't have to go back to the west and say, oh yeah, I forgot one thing. <laughs> no, just keep going. Every direction can be a little bit different. It doesn't always have to be the same. So you can talk to that grandfather the north one, and say the same thing, or a variation of it, or whatever 
you feel like yeah, there's no rules on this. The important thing is that you do this. And then when you're done there, you take a little pause, then move your body to face the east direction and do the same thing there. Again, you can have a variation. It doesn't always have to be exactly the same. And then when you're finished, you can pause and then turn your body to the south direction. And there you do the same thing again. Then when you are finished, you take a pause, return to facing the west direction, and then you look above. Now, the color for the above is blue. So if you want to, you could put something blue on the ceiling. It don't have to be really big. It's not necessary. I'm just saying it's an idea. It's something that could help you, but it's not required. But let's say you do. Okay, let's say you put a small blue cloth on the ceiling. So you face that and you say the same things again. And maybe you say a little bit more. And that's fine. When you are finished with that, you take a pause. You're still facing the west, but now you're looking down. And the earth is seen as having the color green. So what you could do, if you want to, again, it's not required, it's not necessary, but you could have a green cloth underneath you when you do this activity. Yeah, so before you start, you put a green cloth on the bed and sit on it, and then this is the earth, okay? So at this point, you will look down. Now you're talking to the grandmother earth. And again, you say the same thing. Whatever's in your heart and your mind. When you go through this process, it helps because Every time you talk about these things, whatever it is that you said, it helps. It's releasing a healthy energy to do this. And then, according to the natural law of generosity, that energy is going to come back to you four times as strong to help you. So this is a cool activity to do that. It's not something that is required this is not a religion okay this is not something that okay i gotta do this every day at uh four o'clock in the morning <laughs> not that early <laughs> but don't make it like that don't make it so that it becomes a routine but do it it doesn't have to be every day do it when you feel like it Maybe on some days, maybe you do this more than once. As soon as you wake up, if you have to use a the bathroom, then go use a bathroom. Because <laughs> you want to do this in a calm way. So when you're ready, then if you want to have these colored cloths in the directions, if you only want to put them up when you do this, then that's fine too. Or if you want to have these cloths always there, that's fine too. Or you don't have to have any cloths. Yeah? It's not required. But what is required is that you know where West is. Because that's where the ceremony ends and begins. So you can do this and it's a good way to start the day. You can face the West and say, Why well, I had a really good sleep and... um I dreamt of something and I don't understand it, but I think it might mean something. And I'm looking forward to this day, or maybe the day is going to be difficult, so you're saying, I'm kind of nervous about this day. See, it's good to say that because when you keep it in within yourself, it's going to eat you up. So, to help you, even if it's a difficult day that's coming ahead, it's good to say that, yeah, because when you say it, the energy is coming out in your words. And when that happens, this is a healthy thing because you're speaking the truth. And then 
this healthy energy will go out and come back to you four times as strong and will help you. So that's why I said it's okay to say, yeah, this is, I don't feel, <laughs> I'm not looking forward to my day at work. You can say that. It's honest. You have to be honest. Don't keep things bottled up because that's when you go nuts and not the salted kind. <laughs> okay, somebody's getting hungry here. <laughs> anyway, you can say what you want. Yeah, Say whatever is in your heart, whatever thoughts you have about anything. Whether you're worried about something or you're happy about something, say that too. Yeah? So a person could say after they're woke up and they're ready to do this, they can look to the west, sit on their bed. That's if you have a small room, yeah? Because maybe your bed's in the corner someplace, so you can do this from the center of your room, yeah? So maybe the, if the center of your room is the floor, then you can either stand there or sit there, yeah? But whatever the situation is, do this from the center of your room. Some people have their beds in the middle of the room. There's nothing wrong with that. So... According to what I just said, that if you would like to use different colored cloths to represent the directions, that's fine, but it's not necessary. But for some people, it helps. Maybe sometimes you do want to use your cloths, maybe sometimes you don't. Don't make it a routine. Go with what you feel each time you do this. Now, some people might like to have their cloths up the whole time. That's good, too. It's fine. Do it the way you feel and think you should do it, whether you use flags or not. But one more time, I'm going to say, it's very important that you know where the west direction is. So, you can do this and go around the whole circle. Like I said, you just stand in the in the center of your room or sit if you want to. Depends if you can sit on the floor or not. Maybe some people are handicapped and they can't. But just do it where you can. Like I said, it's not a religion, so it doesn't mean you have to do this. I'm just saying this is a good idea in helping. It's an assistance. You can make it a personal ceremony. Like I said, you can use the flags or not. If you are going to use cloths or flags, then put those up first. You can put a blue one on the ceiling to represent the above. And have something green where you're going to sit or stand in the center of your room. So when you start, you stand on the green cloth or flag or whatever it is you're going to use. Because as I said, this represents the earth. Then you face the west and begin your personal medicine wheel ceremony. And just say whatever is in your mind and your heart. Like I said, and go all the way around as I instructed earlier. And when you are getting towards the end and you're looking towards the earth, you look at the green or just look down and address the earth, you talk to the earth, and you say whatever is in your heart and mind as well. When you're done with all six directions, then you close your eyes, listen to each breath that you make, listen to it as you are exhaling and inhaling, just listen to that breath. Don't Focus on the sounds around you. If you hear a car honking, it's okay. But don't focus on it. Hear it, then let it go. And just keep focusing on your breathing. And then you go within yourself. Whatever thoughts come, let them come, then let them go. And start thinking about all the things that you've said. Now you're saying it to yourself. You are the seventh direction. The seventh direction is located where your body, 
your mind, your emotional self, and your soul are connected. This is also called the sacred center. This is where your seventh direction is. We all have it. Now, what some people may want to do is maybe they have certain things they would like to put in each direction. Maybe they have a special item like a plant or a rock. They have one for every direction. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. This is your ceremony. You're making it your personal ceremony. It's only for you. So you do it as how you feel. And as time goes on, maybe you change these things. That's fine too. Because you change as you live your life, as you make choices, and the consequences are either they're turn out as blessings or they teach you something, or both. You're changing, you're developing, and so your medicine wheel will do the same too. It will change too, it will develop. So let's say, for example, at some point you are using a certain stone for the west direction, but maybe a few years later you feel that you want to put another stone there. That's fine, because you're changed. You have developed. You have progressed. So it's okay to do that. So things will change when you do this. So when you do this ceremony, you can be different every time. You can do this at any time. So again, when you're doing this ceremony, as you face each direction, I want to say it one more time. You can say whatever it is in your mind. If there's something you're confused about, if there's something you don't understand that's happening in your life, you can express that to each direction. So you'll be saying it six times. And at the end, you'll be saying it to yourself when you look within yourself, when you are listening to each breath and paying attention to the breath. You're coming to the present moment, the here and now. And then you say these things to yourself. So when it's finished, then you are saying it seven times. Every time you do this, the medicine is coming to you because you are sending out a healthy energy. When you are doing this, every time you say it, we are speaking from your heart. You are speaking honestly. You're sending out a healthy communication. Even if what you're sending, even if what you're saying is difficult, you're being honest. That's where the power is. You're being honest, you're speaking from your heart, and you're talking to these grandfathers and the grandmother earth. They're talking to a lot of people. Inside of you, there are sacred pieces. One is from the earth. One is from a person called Eon from the beginning. And there is your soul. And there are some other things too. When you do this ceremony, you are using those pieces in a healthy way. You are saying things from the heart and your mind, and it goes out. This is a healthy energy. Like I said, even if it's a difficult thing to talk about, you're being truthful. So that's healthy energy. When that goes out, it comes back four times as strong to help you, to bless you. So you can use it during times of difficulty, but you can also use it during good times too. To say, this is a good day, I'm happy, I'm happy with my life, I'm thankful for everything that I have. And I will be mindful of everyone else and also myself to the plants and to the animals 
These are things you can say. And remember the representations that I spoke about in part two. You can use each direction to talk about one of those things. For example, maybe you face the West and you'd want to talk about a certain group of animals. Maybe it's the four-legged, hu topa. Then you face the North and you can talk about another group, the two-legged, hu numpa. Then maybe when you face the East direction, you talk about the winged, Khupahu. And maybe when you face the south, you talk about the fourth group, Dakushkan, that which moves and grows. Maybe when you do this, you can focus on the four parts of yourself. You face the west, and maybe you can say things concerning your mind to help you to have a strong mind, a healthy mind. Think about things that have to do with that. Then when you're at the north, maybe you could think about spiritual things concerning your spiritual part of yourself. So, for example, prayer, meditation, talk about those things when you are facing the north. Then you face the east, maybe you can think about physical things concerning your body. Like, I need to run. I need to take better care of myself physically. I need to eat healthier food. See, you see what I mean? You're talking about your concerns about your physical part of yourself. Then when you face the south, you can focus on the emotional part of yourself. As remember, these are the four parts of yourself. So that's something you can include when you do these things. Anything that I talked about in the part two, the representations of what the medicine wheel could have, that each time you face one of the directions, you can talk about one of those things. Like I just explained about the four parts of the self. Every day can be different. It doesn't have to include everything. The important thing is that when you do this, you say what's in your heart no matter what it is, because it's the truth. And that's a healthy communication. That's healthy medicine. And it comes back to you four times as strong to help you. I'll say it again. So you're saying it seven times. Four for the four directions, one for the above, and the sixth to Grandmother Earth, and the seventh one to you, yourself. And this can really help you. Doing this when you wake up is a wonderful way to start the day. And if you want to, you can do it again before you go to bed. I had a good day. I learned this. I had a good meal. I met a nice person. And whatever is in your heart and mind, I'm thankful for this wonderful day that I had. And then, when you're finished, you can do the direction song. You can incorporate that direction song at any point when you do this. It's a wonderful way to go to bed, to go to sleep. Then when you wake up in the morning, it starts again. When you address the directions, you can say, Jeez, I slept pretty good. I'm thankful for that. Or, or you can say what you're thankful for, what you are concerned about, what you would like to do. You can also talk about your hopes and dreams. Your goals. Because we all know that when we set a goal, we're going to run into some obstacles sometimes. So it's good to talk about these things. So that it's not so overwhelming. Because like I said, when you talk about something difficult, energy goes out. It's not so stressful after that. You're being honest. You're being truthful. 
and that's healthy, then that healthy energy leaves you, comes back four times as strong. So you can talk about those two. You can talk about goals, what you would like to do in your life. You can express that too when you're facing the directions. This is one way you can use that. And if you want to, you can do this in nature too. It doesn't always have to be at a certain places. You can go out into the nature and do the same thing, what I just said. The same thing. You don't need a pipe. You don't need to burn sage. If you want to burn sage, you could, or any herbs that are very nice. But in Lakota, sage has a cleansing effect. It has a calm effect that neutralizes the energy around the area. So it's not about chasing away bad spirits. No, (laughs) that's not what it's meant for. When you hear somebody say, Yeah, I burn sage to get the negative energy away. (laughs) That's incorrect. There is a reason for negative. There is a reason for positive. They need each other to exist. And sometimes there are some negatives that act like positives. And there are positives that act like negatives. And then there is the neutral area. And there is also the complete opposite of everything. All of it is important for the universe to exist, and that includes you. All of this is necessary for you, and it appears in blessings, it appears as life experiences where you learn something. Sometimes that's difficult, sometimes it's okay. You need all of it. We really make a big mistake when we start categorizing things as good and bad. And that's what really is killing ourselves. When we say negative is bad and positive is good, this is not true. That's duality. And I spoke about that in part one and part two. And I have videos called duality, so you can check that out too in the YouTube search engine. If you don't know what duality is, this is an unhealthy way to live. So, don't categorize anything. If it's something that teaches you, it's important that we learn, because that's how we live. And that's the only way you're going to know what love is. Learning is part of that. That includes difficulty. This is something I said in the other videos, too. So, when you're doing this activity, you can say anything that is bothering you or that you're happy about or that you hope for. You can say all these things. You say it to each direction. I was beginning to say, you can do this in the nature as well. There's no set time limit on this. Maybe you can even have a a little medicine wheel that you carry with you wherever you go. And maybe you're riding in a car or a train or a bus or something. And you take it out and look at it and you can do a, a really small one while you're riding the train, while you're in the car. While you're waiting at a stop sign or a stoplight. You can do something like this just a few seconds long. You can visualize to turn your body in all the directions. That's very powerful too, to visualize it. Put it in your mind. So it can be really fast. It can be really short. It can be really long. It doesn't matter. The length of time of doing this ceremony, the duration, is not important. What is important is that you do it. This is a really healthy activity to do in making the medicine wheel a part of you because you are a medicine wheel too. So if you do this activity, you're really reflecting what's happening inside of you because you are a medicine wheel too. And we all connect at that sacred center, that seventh direction. 
So if you would like to do this, I encourage you to do this. Make this your personal ceremony. You can do this as many times as you want. Just don't say, okay, I got to do this at 5 o'clock in the morning and at 8.30. <laughs> then it becomes a religion. Then it loses its power. And you do too. So when you do it, like it's a part of life, like you're breathing, you breathe, this is necessary for you to live. But do this so it can flow through you. It'll help you. It'll lead you to experiences. It will help you to understand things. It will help you in ways that are unimaginable and fantastic and amazing. This is the first sacred symbol that we have in Lakota Star Knowledge. And it's so powerful. This is the symbol of life. It's the symbol of love. It's the symbol of learning, which includes difficulty, because you can learn from difficult things. And all of this falls under love. So when you put this into your life, that's really nice. Because you're acknowledging that you are connected to everything, that we are all connected to each other, just like everything inside of us is connected to each other. We have a universe inside of us, and everything is connected there, just like we are connected to everything around us. This is the complete definition of mitakuye oyasin. It's also the Lakota star knowledge definition. I have to say this because a lot of times today people say, Mitako Yasi, all my relations, they think it's just things that are around them, the plants and animals and people and such. They don't realize that that's only half of the definition. The other half is that there's one inside of you too. And the medicine wheel plays a very important role in that. When you are doing this personal ceremony, you are going within yourself. And at the same time, you're addressing these very sacred entities, these energies that can help you. They can help you understand, but you still have to do the work. But when you do this, you're putting a ball in motion, so to speak. The gears are turning, yeah? the hamster is running. <laughs> yeah, but it's going to move. And as you live your life in a healthy way, You'll be able to get through things. And you'll be able to learn through the difficult parts. And that's how we live. And this is how we love. This is the way to love. This is the purpose of life. The medicine wheel can really help you in that. And I'll say it one more time, because I like to say it. You can use this at any time. When you're feeling down, or maybe you're helping a friend, you can do this together and guide them through it. It is a healing way. The healing way includes learning through difficulty. It also includes blessings. And this is what leads to love. This is really a wonderful symbol. And to do this medicine wheel ceremony, for yourself, for others. This is the way to live. It's a wonderful way. So I encourage you. I encourage you to think about this and learn from all your experiences in life so that you can really enjoy the blessings. And learning from difficulty, it brings blessings. It brings you knowledge. It brings you wisdom. And it brings you peace. So you see, difficulty is important. It's not bad. Our word in Lakota for love is tehila, to love. It has that word tehi in it. Tehi is difficulty. It's even in our language. 
Difficulty is a part of love. We can get through it. We just have to learn from it and make the best of the situation. And it will take us to a very wonderful place when we do that. Then we learn what our priorities are. Then we know what love is. This medicine wheel is our first Lakota star knowledge symbol. It does not require you to have a pipe. It does not require you to have an Indian name or a drum. You don't have to be an Indian or Native American or Indigenous or First Nations or whatever title you want to use to categorize a certain group of people. Because in Lakota Star Knowledge Stories, it says in the beginning, we were Ikche Oyate, the common people. We got a lot of things in common. We laugh at the same kind of things. We get angry and sad at the same kind of things. The same kind of things scare us. We have similar emotions. And even medically, there's four basic blood types. That's interesting. Medicine wheel could represent that too. Of all the people that live on this earth, four basic blood types. But again, you don't need a pipe for this. You don't need any kind of item to do this ceremony because the pipe has only been here 600 years. The medicine wheel has been here since the creation of the earth. That is many millions of years ago. This is what our ancestors had. This was all they needed. This is all that you need. You don't need a pipe. You don't need an Indian name. But it would be really nice if you had a medicine wheel and used it as the way I explain. So I encourage you, think about this and incorporate it into your life. This belongs to everybody because we all have the same four parts. We all have the physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional parts of ourselves. We all bleed red. Red is color of life. It's the color of love. It's the color of learning from difficulties. All of this is love. So the medicine wheel colors are representing the different parts that constitute what is love. And there is a direction song, too, that we have. And you can learn to sing this song if you would like, or you can play a recording of it. You can listen to it. You can do this before you do your personal ceremony, or you could do it in the middle of your ceremony, or you could do it at the end when you are finishing. It's an option. In the song, you're facing the directions. I will put the lyrics on the screen so you can read the lyrics and you can follow what it says. The lyrics on the screen will tell you when to face that direction. Usually when you hear the name of the direction, that's when you face that direction. And you will hear that in the song. So I will put the song here right now. We are the one who is the one who is the one who is the one who Wazia takia etua yo nitro kashila ahitua he yang kelo hayo chekia yo chekia yo he ahitua he yang kelo hayo 
We are young, but I care to want you. Nature can still I hate to want a young girl. Check it out, check it out. I hate to want a young girl. I don't care what you say to me. Check it out, check it out. I hate to want a young girl. One got a key to one yo. What hat hunk a hatchy a young girl. Check it out, check it out. I hate to want a young girl. Ma khata kia e tu wayo Ni khushi ku he chia he yung ke lo hayo Che kia yo, che kia yo He a na khup ta he yung ke lo hayo Ohecha to me takuyapi. This is the way it is, my relatives, my friends. Doksha a ke. Until next time. To read more about Lakota Star Knowledge Spirituality, you can read my book called Wichocha Otechike. You can see the book cover on the right side of this screen. This book contains the information to what I talk about on my Lakota spirituality videos. To purchase this book, please click below where it says Show More. Clicking on that link will open up the description below. And there you will see a link called To Purchase My Books. As you will see, it's an eBay link. Click on that eBay link and there you will see the information to get this book. To learn more about speaking the Lakota language, you can read my book called Chante et Ooglake, Speaking from the Heart. You can see the book cover on the right side of this screen. This book contains the information to what I talk about on my Lakota language mini lesson videos. To purchase this book, please click below where it says Show More. Clicking that link will open up the description below, and there you will see a link called To Purchase My Books. As you will see, it's an eBay link. Click on that eBay link, and there you will see the information to get this book. Lila Pilamayelo, thank you very much.